chapter 4 again such a delight to have everyone here I do know it's snowing and and if you read the weather report today you would have thought it was 18 inches of snow out hallelujah I told the people earlier I said I was just gonna preach from home and broadcast it on the screen because they told me it was 20 inches out there now I got out on the road and found out it was some slush hallelujah are you there first John chapter 4 if you have it say amen if you have it say amen in verse number one, beloved, do not believe every spirit. I was here on Wednesday night, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard was coming, and I tell you, is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He, knows, uh, he, he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for the love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love God does not know God, for God is love. Skip down to verse 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear. The Greek word there is phobio. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Father, we ask and we commit this word into your hands. Father, I decrease that you might increase. Father, I pray that you would give us an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. amen. Just shout as you take your seats. Just shout as you take your seats. Listen, listen, I'm getting ready to minister to you very quickly about this. Uh, releasing the spirit of error. Wow, it's quiet in this Presbyterian, sanctified, Lutheran cathedral of worship. Uh, t t tell somebody, say, neighbor, are you operating in the spirit of error? Listen, go with me. I, I started talking on Wednesday, and, and you need to really get the CD um, from Wednesday's Bible study if you weren't here. So today will, uh, will make perfect sense. I need to make an announcement to you that some of your destinies are so great and so close that you don't have time to waste with stuff that used to get you stuck. Uh, you don't have time to waste with stuff that you used to get uh, tangled up in and tied up in. And please understand, uh, God says to you that in this last day, he would be doing things and he would accelerate it. Touch somebody say accelerate it. Uh, please understand, I made this announcement last week. Things that used to take five years, God can do in five months. Please understand things that used to take five months, he can do in five days. And things that used to take five days, he can do in five minutes. But please understand, God says, I need you to mature quickly so that you can handle what it is I'm trying to give you you are you hearing what i'm saying and so please understand this a bible says in romans i'm not going to go over there for the sake of time the bible says in romans chapter 13 that uh, the minister of god or the man of god bears a sword and he doesn't bear that sword uh, in vain please understand this uh, i didn't come today uh, i may not get a lot of runners i may not get a lot of shouters today because i didn't come today to just make you feel good i came today to cut some stuff up you, you didn't hear what i just said tell somebody say so he finna cut he finna cut it up he he for to come up. I have come to preach hell out of you. Y'all, I need y'all to get with me. I need, need, need you to get with me. Please understand this. So many of us say that we're ready for the next level. We're ready to do the next thing. We're ready to go to the next place. But yet we're immature. And so we can't handle the next place. We can't handle the next level because we can't handle what's going on at this level. Uh, please understand, I, I love plants, and, I love, and I, love, I love trees, and I have all kinds of trees in my house. And please understand, when I'm trying to get a plant of mine to grow, I have to understand, i got to cut some dead stuff off of it in order for it to grow. If I allow the dead stuff to grow with the living stuff, the dead will overtake the living to where I don't have any tree. Are, are y'all here today? So please understand, uh, if we don't allow ourselves to be pruned and allow God to cut some stuff off of us, we can pray and our prayers will be amiss. We will worship, but our worship will be amiss because God says, I hear you, but I'm just choosing not to answer. 
Ah, y'all ain't saying nothing. And he says, I'm choosing not to answer, not because I don't hear you, but I'm choosing not to answer because what you're asking me for, I know you're not ready for. Okay, y'all ain't saying nothing. Remember when you was about 14, 15, and you called yourself being in love with somebody? Oh, okay, I know you ain't been saved all your life. Some of y'all used to date. Come on, shake your head. You used to date. And 14, 15, you talking about we in love. Matter of fact, I hear 16-year-old girl, I hear 16-year-old girls talking about now, Bishop, this the one. <laughs> y'all sophomores in high school. What you talking about, he the one? The Lord woke me up in a dream last night, and I just saw, I saw him in the dream. But please understand, there is certain stuff you're not prepared for. At 16 years old, you're not ready for marriage. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Does somebody say, grow up? Well, please understand this. God has many of us in a place where he is ready to mature you. Please understand, many of us are servants of the Lord. We got saved from hell, and we shout about it. We sing songs about it. Thank Jesus, I'm not going to hell. But that's just being a servant of God. Uh, there's another level called being a son of God. And please understand, God has to get you from being a servant to where he gets you to being a son. Bishop, what's the difference? A servant does not own anything of his master's. In fact, a servant is there to simply do what the master says and what the master commands. And then at that particular point in time, it ends. So whatever the master gives him boundaries for, that's where he's got to stop. But a son understands everything his daddy has is his. And so it's not just being a son, but it's being a daughter. And so many of us are in the servant stage of God. And God is saying, it's good that you're a servant. That's good. But that's level one Christianity. He said, I'm trying to get you to another level in your faith. And it doesn't take you 20 years to get there. It won't take you 15 years to get there. Matter of fact, some of the people that's been saved the longest scare me. Okay, y'all are saying, now I'm going to preach myself. Preach, Bishop. Thank you. So, it's people that sometimes been saved so long get so used to the things of God that they think they've got everything in the Bible figured out. Yet their fruit doesn't reflect what they speak. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And so I've been in this way for 20 years. That's the problem. You've been in the way for 20 years. And so that's why ain't nobody getting saved. That's why ain't no lives being changed because you're so used to the things of God that you didn't realize you were a servant and you thought you were a son. Tell somebody to say, grow up. That's like I said, I, I don't see no runners yet. Where are the runners? Well, please understand this. Uh, uh, many times we, we talk about spiritual warfare. We talk about we fighting the devil and all that kind of stuff. But please understand this. The Bible teaches us in Colossians 2, 5 that the devil has already been defeated. The Bible says that Christ made a captive of the enemy. In other words, he stripped the enemy of his power. So the only power he's got left is the power to speak and to influence you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please understand, I've given this analogy several times. I'll say it again. Please understand, the only thing the enemy can do is act like a pimp. Now, some of y'all, see, some of y'all looking ahead because you used to be. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You used to have lime green suits with snakeskin boots with a matching hat. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Please understand, the only thing that he's got the ability to do is to speak. Please understand, a pimp really doesn't have too much of anything. I told you my story. I grew up in the South, and we had real live pimps. In, in, in Memphis, you have real live, I'm telling you, real pimps. With, with matching cars to match the gators they got on for that day. And the sad thing about it is that they really didn't possess anything except for the fact they were able to influence gullible people. Uh, they were able, able to, and that's why the Bible says that Satan walks around like a lion seeking whom he can devour because he's trying to influence gullible people. See, there's some Christians that the enemy can't walk up to and test with something because he knows it won't work. You, you, you ain't hearing what I'm saying. You, you, and, so, and so what happens is, is he tries to influence through the things that he speaks into your mind. Are y'all here? Does somebody say influence? Please understand this. Uh, real spiritual warfare is, is this. The truth is, is that the real war against the saints is not a war where we're fighting devils. That fight has been done for us. Uh, uh, the real warfare against the saints is our ability to walk in love. Ain't nobody saying nothing. The real warfare that you face every day is not trying to fight the devil because he made it snow. And he didn't make it snow. I just like to think that he made it snow because I don't like snow. But real spiritual warfare, hear me, is not about getting up and talking about, I'm going to fight the devil. And then you see these people, and they, they make these songs, I'm a demon slayer, I'm a demon slayer. How you slay it? You can't see him. 
watch this. The real spiritual warfare you and I face is the ability to walk in love. Tell somebody to say walk in love. Tell somebody else say walk in love. Uh, please understand, I talked to you a few weeks ago about the heart. Please understand, uh, and I've been shifting some stuff up the last few weeks because I'm cross-training you. Anytime you go to the gym, uh, if you're going to get a good training at the gym, now I don't know because I ain't been, but I heard. Uh, I heard that when you go to the gym, they'll cross train you. So in other words, on Monday, they'll have you working on your biceps. And on Tuesday, they'll have you working on your, your what's this? Your thigh. What's the name? Quads, biceps. <laughs> and then on Wednesday, they'll have you working on your calves. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Because they're cross training you. See, the problem with many folks in the body of Christ is they're very strong in one area, but they're very weak in other areas. And so there's no balance. And so they know how to shout and they know how to praise and they know how to do all of that, but they don't know how to take that home many times. Please understand what you do on Sunday mornings really doesn't mean too much unless you take it home with you. A ain't nobody said nothing, but, but please understand a real mature Christian doesn't just say, oh, that was a nice message. Oh, I like that. A mature Christian takes it and says, I'm going to do something with this because I understand the difference between where I am now and where I want to be is the actions and the steps I take. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I, I, I told you I ain't going to get no runners today. That, that, that's all right. Josh, go run for me. I just <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. Uh, there are two ways that God can get you to walk in what he's ordained for you. How many people you believe you got a destiny? How many people you believe you have a purpose? How many people believe your purpose is not to wake up, go to work, come home, eat some dinner, go to bed, and do it all over again? How many people? Let me, let me see you. Uh, uh, please understand this. There's two ways. Somebody say two ways. There's two ways you can get to that destiny in your life. There's two ways you can get to that purpose in your life. Are you ready for it? I said, are you ready for it? Please understand this. You can take the long way or you can take the shortcut. Are, are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody said, Bishop, that ain't deep. Watch this. What's deep about it is that most of us choose to take the long way. Okay. Uh, the children of Israel turn a few days journey into a 40-year journey walking around the same mountain simply because they never learned the lesson from the previous level. Oh, God. And so what happened is, is that they walked around the same place in their life for 40 years and they never saw change because they never refused to change. You, yeah, please, please just say, when you refuse to change, you're really refusing for God to take you into anything new. Because God says, unless I can give you the ability, unless you get the ability to make change in your life, you're never going to see change in your life. Did you hear what I just said? So watch this. Somebody said the long way and the shortcut. I, I, I'm just about through. Please understand this. Please understand this. Uh, the shortcut is maturing quickly. Watch this, watch this, watch this now. Think of Tiger Woods. Now, people talk about Tiger Woods today, and Tiger Woods, he's lucky. He's just lucky. You know, he just got the gift of golf. Well, I ain't found that in the scripture. Ain't no such thing as the gift of golf. You hear what I'm saying? When the Lord was giving talents to people, he didn't give the gift and talent of golf. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, pl please understand this. Uh, 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 Tiger, when he was a young boy, when all the rest of the kids were going out and having fun and doing all this, that, and the other, Tiger was training. Uh, Tiger was preparing. Tiger was out on the green. He was putting. Tiger was riding the cart around with his daddy. Tiger was preparing because Tiger knew if I can mature quickly, it won't take me until I'm 50 to start winning PGA championships. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, and so, so many of us, we, we live out, it's amazing to me. You talk to some of our young people. I go to the schools often. And if you talk to some of our young people, how mature they are and stuff that doesn't matter. And so they know how to work my space like, like the back of their hand. They know who J-Lo married to, what the baby's name is, where Britney's at, what hospital they went to. But don't none of that really mean anything. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. And, and so what happens is, is they're maturing stuff that doesn't really matter. And the problem with that is that, please understand, if they're not taught early about business and about finance and about those kinds of things, they'll grow up into immature people that are overly mature in certain areas. Did you hear what I just said? And so they will grow up knowing about the gossip and knowing about this and knowing about doing all of that. But they will have no clue how to actually walk out and have a productive life. And so now everything that goes wrong, it must be the devil. Are y'all are y'all ain't y'all here? I just I know they shouting at home. God bless you. I know they shouting at home. Uh, please understand this: there is nothing worse than seeing a grown man living with his mama. 
Do the doom, do doom, do. Watch this. Watch this. Please understand. There is nothing worse than seeing a 45 year old man still talking about what he's fixing to do. There's nothing worse than seeing a man. God created men to be conquerors. He created men to subdue. He created men to do, have dominion. There's nothing worse than seeing a man full of excuses for what he could have had in his life, but he refused to mature. You didn't hear what I said. And so now he chose, I'm going to go run and I'm going to run out with the boys. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get saved one day, but you know it's hard being saved. No, it's hard for a pimp. Y'all, 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 y'all ain't, y'all ain't talking. Please understand, it's hard not knowing who your baby's daddy is. That, that's hard. It's hard wondering if you got an STD. That's hard. It's hard wondering where your next meal's gonna come from. That's hard. Are y'all, are y'all here? I told you I, I gotta cut some stuff. Tell somebody say he gotta cut some stuff. Uh, uh, please, please understand this. Uh, that's how many saints are though. They, they've been saved for twenty years, but they're still not mature. They're grown because they've been in there. And you go to some churches, you'll see in the deacons, they've been sitting in the same seat for 15 years. But yet they never matured. And so they walk around leading immature people that can be uh, taken and that can be taken captive. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tell somebody to say two ways. Shortcut. In a long way. Please understand your heart. I talked to you about this. Your heart represents your mind. It's your thought, your will, your understanding. It's the seat of the decision-making matrix that's built into you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, watch this. Flip over to Matthew 15. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Matthew 15. Matthew 15. Watch this. Watch this. Are you there? Matthew 15, verse number 17. Look what it says. Do you not yet understand the things that enter the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart? Uh, please understand, a lot of times people will say, well, I didn't mean to say that. No, you just didn't mean for me to hear you say that. Because what was in you is what really comes out of you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, he says this, but those, uh, uh, verse 19, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, uh, please understand, the word murder there has got a dual meaning. It's not just talking about literal murder. It's talking about killing one's influence by gossip. Okay, I just said something right there. I don't have time. W watch this. He says, he says, evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands did not defile a man. Please understand this. Everything in your life comes from your heart. The problem is most hearts are filled with fear. Watch this. And out of fear comes hatred. Are y'all still here? Please understand this. The real war against the saints is that many people have grown loveless. Okay, okay. Let me, let me rewind. The real war that you face every day is not a war with the devil. It is a war with yourself. Okay, I'm going to wait till you get it. The real war that's going on is not what's happening outside here. It's what's happening inside of you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And what the enemy's desire is to do is to get you to walk in a lack of love. Because if you lack love, you will then walk in hatred. If you walk in hatred, hatred involves fear. Fear involves torment. Okay, I'm going to fix this up. I'm going to connect some dots in just a minute. I'm going to fix this up. Please understand this. Please understand this. And, and, and please understand, it's sad that sometimes folks in the church will be the people that do you wrong the quickest. Ain't nobody saying nothing. I'm gonna pray. I just need about two shouters. That's all I need. I, I need to deal without the rest. That's all I need. It's sad that people that's tongue-talking, Holy Ghost filled, pew jumping, spitting all out the mouth saints will be the first people to steal from you. The first people to lie on you. The first people to. Why? Because we've grown loveless. Watch this. Matthew 24, 12. It says this. And because iniquity, you understand iniquity is generational sin that's passed down. Three kinds of sin in scripture. Sin, which means to miss the mark. Archery term. Please understand. Then there's transgression, which is to willingly disobey the word of God. And then third, there is iniquity. Iniquity refers to generational sin. 
Watch this. Look at what he says. He says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Watch this. In other words, he says, because people get stuck in their daddy's stuff, in their granddaddy's stuff, in their grandmama's stuff, he says they'll stop loving people because they're stuck in what happened 20 years ago. You didn't hear what I just said. And they're stuck in what happened back in 88. And they're still mad at Big Mama because Big Mama didn't get him as much greens as she gave Pookie Neum. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Please understand this. Because people get stuck in generational sin they wouldn't love. Please understand. If we don't love, the Bible says, then God says, he says, they may look like me. They may talk like me. They may even act like me. But the problem is they're not mine. I'm going to preach anyhow. I don't care. Right is right. I ain't trying to make friends. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. I'm just going to go and drop it like it's hot since ain't nobody saying nothing. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. It says this. But know this, that in the last days perilous times would come, for men would be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Please understand, uh, uh, money is not evil. It is the love of money that's evil. And what makes us love money? The lack of it. If you want the truth, the lack of money is the root of all evil. You ever seen somebody get involved with drugs? I guarantee you it ain't because they like the taste. All right, all right, all right. Okay, watch this. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people turn away. For out of the sword of those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. Here, watch this, verse 7. I like this. It says, always learning. <laughs> watch this. They in church every week. In prayer class every week. They're the first ones to register for Bible college. But he says, if there's iniquity there, he says, they will always be learning but never come into the fullness of knowledge. You ever met somebody so smart they're stupid? They, they know so much that they think they can navigate and maneuver around the system. Uh, okay, all right, all right, watch this, watch this, watch this. Uh, verse, verse number nine, but they will progress no further for their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was. Watch this, somebody say maturity. Maturity. Uh, please understand. Please understand. I, I, I want you to look at your neighbor. Look him in the eye real good. Look him in the eye real good. Tell him, say, neighbor, it's time to grow up. Look at somebody else. And look at somebody else. Look him good in the eye. Tell him, say, neighbor, it's time to grow up. And that's for everybody, me included. Watch this. Watch this. Please understand this. The only way to maturity is to deny your carnality. Are you hearing me? The only way to maturity is to deny your flesh. Let me make a perfect example. Your flesh, and I'm guilty of this yesterday. <laughs> Your flesh, but uh, well, let me talk about me. I'll just talk about me. I love to eat. I'm just, look, look, look. Eating is my hobby. Y'all ain't saying nothing. My fact, my fact, my fact. Eating is what I, <laughs> but after preaching, I, that, eating is what I do. I says, I love a good meal. Matter of fact, that's why when I travel and I go to places in the south, I will come back with a bunch of food because, because they, don't, they don't cook up here like they do down there. Watch this. And so yesterday, I, I was out to, I, I, I was, it was about 9.30. Now, I know I don't need to be eating. Can, can I just be real? Watch this. Because some of y'all did it too. Y'all went to Taco Bell's last night. Don't play with me. And so, and so watch this. And so uh, uh, 9.30, and so I started thinking, I'm hungry. And, and then so I, I went and looked around in the refrigerator and I said, well, you know, I don't really see nothing that, you know, you got to cook that. <laughs> Remember, I already told y'all I can't cook. So you got to cook that. That's going to take too long. And I don't really want to do this. And then I had some breakfast food, but I said, it's 930 at night. Are you hearing me? And so I start thinking I'm hungry. And so I start putting on my slippers, start putting on my coat. Because I'm finna go get me something to eat. Now, all the while, I'm sitting there debating whether or not I really need to go eat. Because I know I could just drink some water and I'd be all right. 
You understand what I'm saying? A lot of times you, you think you're hungry, you're not hungry, you're just thirsty. And so I know I could just drink some water and I'd be all right. Long and short is, is that it's 9.45, and I'm like, I'm on, I'm, I was on the phone talking to a good bishop friend of mine, and I said, man, I don't know. I said, man, I so, I so am hungry. He said, bishop, you don't need to eat. I said, yeah, but you know, man, you know, a little sandwich, you know. <laughs> a little sandwich, that's, that's, all, that's all I want. A little, little sandwich, that's all I want. I, I ain't trying to eat heavy. And so long and short is I get in my car, and, 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 then, and, and then I start driving, and then I said, no, I'm not going to eat. I'll just get some fresh air. And then all of a sudden, I pulled up by in front of a Burger King, and the Burger King was still open. And so I drove into the drive-thru with every intent on getting myself a small Coke. But then all of a sudden, Satan, no, I'm just... <laughs> What's well, this? So I'm talking to the man. He said, oh, God, but, you know, hello, sir. How are you? You know, I said, oh, y'all still open? <laughs> yes, sir. We're still open. I said, oh, uh, all right. Uh, I tell you, let me just get a small coat. Okay, sir, is that all? So I'm sitting there going back and forth. I don't need to eat. But that fish sandwich. See, and then I justified it. It ain't beef, so it's probably got a better fat content because it ain't beef. And then I can, I won't eat all the fries, because you, 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 you follow me. The long and short is, I went with the intention to get a Coke, and I left out with a whole number seven. <laughs> Not just any number seven, I supersized it. I, I, I king-sized it. You hear what I'm saying? Watch this, watch this, watch this. And that's how most of us are with our everyday life, is that we can't deny our carnality. Your body says, do it. You say, okay. Your body says, jump. You ask it how high. You, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Please understand this. Maturity is not about knowing all the scripture. Can I make an announcement to you? The devil knows more scripture than you'll ever know. So real maturity is not about knowing everything in the Bible. In fact, sometimes I get scared of people that know too much. The Bible says because they, they, they know so much that knowledge has puffed them up. Uh, so, so, so watch this. That's not real maturity. You, you can know scriptures, but if you don't live those scriptures, you're not walking in maturity. Watch this. Watch this. Please understand. Real maturity is walking in the love of God. That's a good place to shout. Let me give you. The love of God is a process that is being perfected in you. Now watch this. You can take the shortcut. or the. Now watch this. You're going to the same place. The question is, do you want to get there in 11 days or 40 years? The destination doesn't change. What changes is how quickly you get there. Oh, you, you didn't hear what I just said. And so that's why some of you got people that don't like you and they hate on you because you got to your destination a lot more quickly than they thought you should have gotten, but you chose maturity. You, you chose... Are you hearing what I'm saying? Watch this, watch this, watch this. Please understand this. Uh, what, what's carnality? Carnality is the spirit of error. I'm going to fix this up. Watch this. Carnality, say it with me, say carnality, carnality. is the spirit of error. Uh, please understand, we just read about that in 1 John. In other words, the spirit of, ever says, of, of, of error says, I do what I feel I can do, and what I tell myself I can't do, I'll blame it on the devil. I, I told you I'm, I'm cutting some stuff. I'm, I'm, give me a sword, somebody, because I'm cutting stuff. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, uh, the spirit of error says, I do what I feel that I can do. So if I feel like loving you today, I'm going to do it. But if I wake up and got a crook in my neck and I don't feel like doing it, then I'll blame it on the devil. Are y'all here? Tell somebody, say, grow up. Please understand this. Please understand this. Uh, so let's expose the, the spirit of error. Are you here? Let's expose the spirit of error. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Y'all here? Watch this. The spirit of error is based out of fear. The spirit of error is based out of fear. I'm going to go kind of slow so you can get it. The spirit of error is based out of fear. Watch this. Let me, let me tell you whether or not you've got the spirit of error. Please understand. The spirit of error refuses correction and hides itself in deep spirituality. You ever met them people that's so deep you wonder if they on earth? 
time you talk to him, how you doing? Mm, I was just, honey, I was in a vision of the Lord. I was just caught up with Jesus. I asked you where you want to go eat after church. I did not ask you all that. It refuses to be corrected. So in other words, when you try to correct the spirit of error, there's always an impending excuse for why. I, I, I would have treated my wife right, but I didn't have a daddy to show me how to do that, so I don't do it. The spirit of error distorts scripture to prove its point. Watch this. Let, let me make it plain for you. The spirit of error will say to a husband, baby, the wife says you have to submit and use it against her. But skip reading the part where it says he's got to treat her like Christ treats the church. And so he will take the scripture to distort it. To make, you ever met somebody like that? that? Every time that you talk to them, they got a scripture that they didn't took out of context. Well, you, well, why are you always late? Well, because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. And so me and the Lord were having joy before time. And they come up with some foolish thing that don't even make sense. But because they're walking in the spirit of error, to them it makes sense. But let, let me help you. You want to know if you got the spirit of error? When I just gave you those two things, you started thinking of other people. The spirit of error never recognizes its own faults because it's so busy finding fault with other people. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's all right. That's all right, Anthony. I'm a, that, that's all right. They ain't got to say nothing with me. That's all right. That's all right. Watch this. Please understand. The spirit of error stops productivity. People will be active, but they will not be productive. So they will run in place and they will never make any gain in their life. Okay, so 20 years later, they're still complaining about the first husband. Because they were active, they just weren't productive. They didn't go anywhere. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Spirit of error makes excuses for why things are the way they are. Well, you know, I'd go to church every Sunday, but I don't have church clothes. Now, I ain't found church clothes in the scripture yet. So if you, find, if you really want to be scriptural and wear church clothes, then i tell you what they wore in, in, in the church. Matter of fact, we can get you some sheets and cut them up and put them outside. You can wear church clothes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Watch this. Watch this. The spirit of error causes you to stumble in front of your enemy. Watch this. When you're walking in the spirit of error because you're full of pride and arrogance, you will walk in front of your enemy and not realize there was a trap set for you. You'll fall into the trap, and then all of a sudden, again, remember, it's not their fault. It's the, it's, it's. Are, are y'all here? <laughs> the spirit of error keeps you in emotional torment. In other words, the spirit of error keeps you reliving stuff in your life. Your mind is like a movie theater. And many times you will go back and play stuff that's out of style. You'll play movies that they don't even make no more. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The spirit of error is always talking about the good old days as if those days were that good. You remember, remember, remember our song? And you playing some old David Ruffin and talking about... As if it was that good. Are, are y'all here? The spirit of error replays stuff in its mind. And it's full of regret. If I had done this, I would be this. If I didn't have this kid, I would do, be doing this. If I didn't do this, I would be over here. If I would have took that job in Cleveland, I'd be doing this. If I wouldn't have got married, I would have been doing this. The spirit of error walks in perpetual torment. See, see, watch this. You, you want to know, and, I'm, and then this is for your neighbor, not for you. If, you. if you're walking with the spirit of error, and that's all right because we're going to get it fixed today. If you're walking with the spirit of error, God, you, you're, you're, you're looking through at what could be your future. The problem is, is you constantly look in that rearview mirror. And you got this huge windshield in front of you, but you're constantly stuck in the rearview mirror. And you're in torment because you see stuff and you wonder, what if? Baby, I'm here to make an announcement to you. God has ordered your steps. And so whatever happened, it's over. It's done with. Where you're at now is not too late for you to make the change you need to make. You may have had a bankruptcy. So what? You may have had a divorce. So what? Let the redeemed of the Lord say. Are you here? 
The spirit of error, watch this, it makes you appear to be arrogant. So you could be the most down-to-earth person, but the spirit of error will give you an air of pride. You'll walk around and you'll walk with your head up because the spirit of error wants to oppress others around it so that it can be exalted. And, and so what happens a lot of times in marriages, watch this, a lot of times men in marriages, men will want to control, but they won't know how to lead. There's a difference. The spirit of error wants to control everything around it. And so it wants to control the way you respond to stuff. It wants to control what you say. It wants to control because the spirit of error says, I've got to be in control. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The spirit of error, watch this. The spirit of error, the arrogance that it possesses is what keeps God from moving on their behalf. Bible says pride comes before. Watch this. So in other words, God says, I see you and I see what you're going through, but because you operate in error and out of order, I'll have to sit and I'll have to look. I could get involved. The problem is pride keeps me from getting involved. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm just about through. I'm just about through. Watch this. Please understand this. Uh, it, not only is it full of pride, but the pride it's full of is a wall it created as a result of shame. Pride is always the result of some shame. You read in Genesis, the Bible says this. It says, it says uh, I think in the end of chapter 2, it says that they were both naked in the garden and they were not ashamed. Watch this. The very next verse says, now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. What, what, what is being said there? Please understand this. It's understand that when you become ashamed of truth, you will become prideful about error. Are you here? When you are, please understand, that's why people lie. People lie because they're ashamed of truth. So you ever met somebody that's lied about everything? Matter of fact, everything, you know how they lie because they open their mouth. That's, that's how you know they lie. And they will tell you stuff that they have no ability to do. And so they're a customer service rep at their job, yet they make you think they run the show. They will embellish what they have in order to compensate for what they wish they did have. And so, and so, yeah, you know, we got that new car or we got that new house and, and we got all this stuff. And the problem is, every time you go to see it, it's in the shop. <laughs> Y'all got some family members like that. I know I'm right about it. And they tell you about the new person that they dating, yet they never seem to be around. They always out the country. No, they don't exist. And cyber dating don't count as dating. <laughs> well, watch this. I, I'm just about to. The, the spirit of error is misunderstood often because its motives are always questionable. The spirit of error is, it, please understand, a lot of people, when they say, I always get misunderstood, I get misunderstood, it's because they're walking with the spirit of error. Because what happens is, is they're not really sure who they are. And because they're not sure who they are, they project something false to people. The only problem is people can perceive that. You ever had somebody talk to you and you just, and they smile and just, oh, hallelujah, oh, blessed be God. I just, oh, girl, and, all that, and they do all this kind of stuff. And then you realize, wait a minute, that they, they, this is as fake This is the fakest. Watch this. And, 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 and then what's sad about it is we'll waste time with them kind of folk. You will spend 10 minutes texting somebody back you don't even like. All right, all right. Watch this. Watch this. Please understand. The spirit of error resists evident truth and cannot be reasoned with. The spirit of error will look at this tree and say, you know, I really like them yellow trees y'all got there at the church. That's really nice. And you'll tell them, no, that tree is green. No, that tree is yellow. The truth is evident. Everybody else sees it but them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Anybody have met people like, like what I'm talking about? Anybody know people? How many people? You are the person. I'm a, <laughs> watch this. Watch this. Watch this. The spirit of error resists evident truth, and it won't let you correct it. And if it does let you correct it, it'll be a disclaimer attached to it. Okay, let me give you an example. So I re Oh, so the trees are green. Yeah, but that's because when the light hits it, it refracts off of it. And see, then it makes it look like it's yellow. So see, that's why I perceived it was yellow. It will justify its error. Uh, oh, 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 okay. Uh, uh, uh. All right, let me just move on. Let me, let me, let me, let me just move on. The spirit of error uncovers you and makes you prone to mistakes. Uncovers you and makes you prone to mistakes. Please understand, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there's a time, there's a season for everything. Please understand, there is stuff that is always hitting your life. The thing is, is you've got a spiritual umbrella, and that umbrella is covering you. That's why the Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, he says, he'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Many times when you don't even know there's a devourer there that needs to be rebuked. Uh, and so while he's rebuking the devour for your sakes, that umbrella is covering you. The problem is, is that when you walk in the spirit of error, God removes the umbrella. And so now you are susceptible to everything that was headed your way. Uh, and so many of the storms and trials and situations we get into, we get into because we're operating with the spirit of error. And we wonder, Lord, why haven't you protected me? And God is saying, because I can't protect something that's in error. Are y'all here? Y'all here? What, what's this? Tell somebody say, is, is, is he cutting you? Is he, let, let me say this. When I'm preaching, I'm never preaching to judge nobody because I understand I live in a glass house and people that live in glass houses should never throw stones. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But please understand, the, if we are going to see what God has ordained for us to have in life, we have got to be able to mature. Are you here? Watch this. The spirit of error walks in emotions rather than the love of God. And let me make that plain. Please understand, love is not an emotion. It is a decision. And so that's why people say, I just feel in love today. Okay, give a couple days and you'll feel out of love. Listen, we met, you know, and we met down in Cancun. We just fell in love. Okay, and then three weeks later, how they fall out? How you fall out of it? Watch this, because anything you fall into, you'll easily be able to fall from. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The spirit of error walks in emotions. Everything it does is based off of emotion. It buys stuff off of emotion. It makes decisions off of emotions. It makes deposits in their bank account off of emotions. It chooses a job off of emotions. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. The spirit of error, because I'm going to preach in just a minute. Y'all ready? Watch this. The spirit of error sees the uh, errors in others while seeing itself as a victim. So in other words, the spirit of error will watch the problems with everybody else, but it will look at itself as a perpetual victim. And so everything that happens to them, they had nothing to do with it. They're the victim. Everybody met somebody with a victim mentality? Everything that happens to them, it's, well, you know, so-and-so did, so I don't know why everybody does this to me. I don't know why I'm always, I don't know why. I don't know why. Because the spirit of error will keep you walking in that kind of place. So y'all hear just a couple more things because I got to uproot it. Because if you don't uproot it, see, the problem is most of us are trying to build our lives, but we're building on shaky foundation. And so then when a storm hits, the storm knocks you down. And now you got to get six months before you can get back to where you were before the storm. How about we just build on the right foundation first so when the storm comes, you can withstand it. Tell somebody say, I'm building for the storm. Tell somebody say, I'm building for the storm. Watch this. The spirit of error does this. Please understand. The spirit of error thinks it's close to God. But when they enter the room, God exits. This is too deep for Sunday. I should have saved this for Wednesday. Uh, it thinks it's close to God. Watch this. In other words, it's what we read in Timothy. It has a form of godliness. There's just nothing behind it. Okay. So, so what happens is, is their prayers aren't answered. There's a delayed harvest in their giving. So they tithe and they wonder why they don't see any harvest. And when they worship God, there's no change. Please understand, a lot of times we say we're in the presence of the Lord. We lift our hands in the presence of the Lord and all that. And we talk about that. Yet we leave and we don't change. And so if I am genuinely in the presence of God, I will change. Because if I see him, I become transfigured to be like him. 
And so that is why worship is so important because in worship, it is when you are transformed to look like God. Please understand, you can listen to as many messages and eight steps to this and four steps to this and two steps to a turnaround and three steps to a breakthrough and 18 steps to a miracle. You can do all of that, but one minute of worship will change all of that for you. Because what God, please understand, God has already prepared a life before you got here. The problem is, is that many of us aren't able to walk into it because he can't trust us with it. Would you give a child who couldn't spend $2 right $200? Your son come out the store with four lollipops. You sit him in there to get some milk and eggs. They come out with four suckers, five pieces of gum, and a donut. Ain't got no milks. Ain't got no eggs. I said milks. Talking like past talking like Pastor Russell, that's Chicago talk for you. <laughs> Watch this. If they couldn't be trusted with two, you couldn't trust them with more. Not because you didn't love them, they just weren't mature enough to handle that. And that is the reason why even in our nation, people are talking about, well, preachers this and preachers this and the mega preachers and all this and all this. Please understand, they can be trusted. And if you want what somebody else has, you do what they did to get it and find yourself faithful in it. Are you here? I just got a couple more. Watch this, spirit of error, watch this. It steals your time, your money, and your relationships. Watch this. It steals because you're not watching for it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen to this. Matthew 24. It says, but know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what to watch the thief would come, he would have watched and he would not have suffered loss. Watch this. So if I am not taught about the spirit of error in order to locate it so when it pops up in my life, I can reject it. It will creep into my life and start stealing from me and I wonder what's going wrong. Are you here? Are you here? Watch this. Does somebody say the spirit of error is a spirit? Watch this. Watch this. Which means this. How do you deal with spiritual things? Spiritual things first start with a realization. Spiritual things first start with an understanding of what's reality. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. If God is trying to get you to a place in life, let me tell you how he's going to do it. He's going to throw something in your face that you thought you had conquered that you really didn't. And the evidence of where you're getting ready to move in life is not through what you're going through. Watch this. The evidence is that if God threw something in my face I thought I had conquered, he's throwing it in my face because if I conquer it, there, were, there rests a place of blessing for me. Okay, you missed what I just said. So anytime the Lord puts something back in your face, he puts it in your face so that you are able to understand that if you can conquer this, he says, then I've got all of this prepared for you. Uh, please understand, I said this Wednesday night, when you're taking a test, you don't take the test at the beginning of the class. You take the test at the end of the class. So if your love walk is being challenged, it's not because you're not good. It's not because you're bad. It's because God says, I've got to mature you. Because if I can get you mature, then I've got a place of blessing, a place of gyro created for you. So, so the question is, Bishop, how do I deal with the spirit of air? Real simple. One, number one, repent for it. Repent for it. Out of all those characteristics, I, how many people, you'll be honest with me. Now, if you got the spirit of error, you won't lift your hand. <laughs> how many people, if you'll be honest, you just listened to one of those things and you said, I, I've done that before. Let me see your hand. Uh-huh. Okay, now let me find the ones without no hands so we can go lay hands. No, I, I'm just messing. I'm just messing. Watch this. Watch this. Number one, if I recognize it, I repent for it. And when I repent for it, I am repenting for the sake of change. But please understand, God is not impressed with you being sorry. God is impressed with you changing. Please understand, please understand. People, I, I remember I used to say as a kid, I used to say, sorry, don't help. I used to say that. Somebody do something to me and they say, I'm sorry. And I used to say, sorry, don't help. I said, I, I'm not interested in that. Sorry, don't help. If you want to fix it, then change, then fix it. Watch this. Please understand, so many of us sometimes, we get so used to saying sorry to God that it numbs us to where we're always uh, saying sorry, but we're never repenting. To repent means to turn from, change, do different. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I, I, I told y'all we're going to get a lot of amens today. That's all right. 
Watch this. Watch this. The spirit of error is fueled by fear. Spirit of error doesn't use faith because it has to go by what it sees. Why? Because remember, it does everything based on emotion. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The worst thing you can do for somebody with the spirit of error is make excuses for them. Well, he's mean to the kids because he's going through a lot right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, we don't talk that much because, you know, we, 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 you know, we just, we can hit the rocky time in our marriage. And, and so that's why we don't talk that much. I, I don't come to church, Bishop. It's too many hypocrites in the church. What they got to do with you? Matter of fact, that's hypocrisy. To make somebody else a hypocrite is to judge them for what they're doing wrong, which makes you a hypocrite because you're doing wrong. Nah, I, ain't, I don't do the church thing because, you know, you got preachers with all this and all that. Listen, you can be blessed too. It ain't about no preacher. It ain't about no mega preacher and mega man. It's about Jesus. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. The worst thing you can do is make an excuse for somebody. She's mean because she didn't have a mother. He, he act like that because he needs a man in his life. Please, please understand, I didn't have one, and I don't act crazy. Depends on when you catch me. You catch me Monday night at staff meeting, I may get a little, I may get a little rough with you. <laughs> Watch this. The worst thing is excuses. Because if you make excuses for them, they act like this because they lost their mama when they were a child. Are y'all hearing me? If you make an excuse for them, watch this, it gives them a green light to always use that excuse for what they do. So every time they do anything, uh, it's, like Adam, it's the woman you gave me. Adam, what that got to do with why you did it? It's the woman. Then the woman said, and it wasn't me, God, that was the, that was the snake. It's a serpent. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Watch this. If you make excuses for people that walk with the spirit of error, they will never ever confront it because they will think they're justified to do it. And ain't nobody saying nothing. And I know that's just because it's settling in real deep. Are you hearing me? Watch this. Last thing with the spirit of error, you kill it. How do you kill it? You kill it when you look, watch this, in the mirror and as opposed to seeing what you've been projecting, you see what reality is. There's an old cartoon, old cartoon of a son and a dad, and they went fishing. And when they went fishing, what ended up happening was this, is that they, uh, uh, the, da the dad says to the, uh, to the son, he, he said they threw the, the thing, the, what you call that, the fishing rod, pole, whatever, fishing, th the thing. They threw it out, threw the fishing rod out, and, and it got caught in the, in the tree. And, 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 and the dad and the son said to the dad, dad, why aren't we catching any fish? And the dad says to the son, he says, son, we have found the enemy, and he is us. Watch this, watch this. Y'all here? Y'all here? Watch this. If I understand that the spirit of error has been illegally operating in my life, when I look into the mirror, please understand, please understand, then I understand that I can now see it for what it's worth. Watch this. In other words, I finally found my thief. Okay, let me just, let me just, watch this, watch this. Watch this. I finally find the thing that's been stealing from me. Okay. John 10.10. 10. The thief comes but to... Can I make an announcement that that ain't talking about the devil? Can I tell you who that is? It's the spirit of error. And the spirit of error steals years from you. Steals time from you. Because God tries to correct you and you reject his correction and so you wander. Mad at everybody else when it was really your fault. But the good news is, is that we got another day to get it right. I wish you touch somebody and say, it ain't too late for me. Tell somebody else, tell them, it ain't too late for me. Watch this, watch this. Worst thing that the spirit of error does is it steals your joy. Watch this, watch this, watch this. 
Your joy is stolen because you put up illegitimate defenses to reject things that aren't coming at you. I'm going to say that again. Your joy is stolen because most of you have more security walls up than the Pentagon. And you're trying to protect yourself against stuff that's not even coming at you. So that's why you get hurt so easily. Because you were trying to get hurt because you were looking to be hurt because your defenses were up. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And that's why you can get offended easily. And people, people come into church all the time. Well, I just, Bishop, he said, you know, he asked the people to stop moving so much. And I just, you know, I don't like when a preacher asks you to stop moving. What? Spirit of error. Well, I just, you know, well, why, Bishop, well, why he got that pink shirt on? You know, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand all that. See, I like my preacher to just wear a certain tie. You see, y'all laughing. But your neighbor. Watch this. Watch this. I'm through. Watch this. <laughs> Watch this. The spirit of error, because it is so trying to protect itself, ends up hurting everybody they come in contact with. They're the people that say, I got hurt back in 77, and I'll be doggone it if some man hurt me again. And they're 70. They're 50, they're 48, wondering why they can't find nobody. Because the defenses are up. Some of y'all need to get this tape. Y'all got family members. You just need to buy a whole block of them and send them the phone. Watch this, watch this. And they wonder, why ain't stuff working for me? It's not that you're doing so much of what's wrong. It's that you're not doing enough of what's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Tell somebody to say, I'm going to get free. Tell somebody to say, I'm going to get free. Watch this. Watch this. When you operate with the spirit of error, you become double-minded. Bible says in James, let a double-minded man not suppose he'll receive anything from God. You know how people with the spirit of error are? On Monday, they're for you. On Tuesday, they're against you. On Wednesday, they're neutral. And you don't know which person you're talking to, so you got to feel around and know which one of you am I talking to today. Am I talking to the crazy you or the good you? Did you eat before we talk? Which one am I talking to? Because they operate with the spirit of error, so you don't know which person you're dealing with. Because double-minded literally means to be double-souled. Ah, God. Your soul is your mind, thoughts, will, emotions. So they've got two minds about everything, two wills about everything, two emotions. You ever met somebody that can't make a decision to save their life? It take them 45 minutes to figure out what restaurant they're going to. And then when they go, they get mad because they really didn't want to go to that one. But then they didn't have nothing to say about the one they wanted to go to, but yet because, well, you know, spirit of error. Watch this. Everybody stand your feet. Everybody stand your feet. I knew I wasn't going to get no shouters today. But how many people, you, you found some stuff out about yourself? Wave at me. Wave at me. Wave at me. Please understand this. This is not designed to beat you down. Sometimes, please understand, what is the purpose of a parent? A parent reveals to their child where they were in error. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And what God has done for you today is he's revealed to you where you've been in error. Because God says, I've got so much for you I want to do. The Bible says, your eyes haven't seen. But he's revealed it by his. The problem is, is when you walk in the spirit of error, you can't see the forest for the trees. Thank you for tuning in to today's life-giving message. Harvest exists to change lives by leading people to totally love God, love people, and love life as one church in global locations. And if you have a testimony of how Harvest has changed your life, let us know on our website contact us page. We're able to continue to change lives because of the faithful giving of people just like you. And if you'd like to contribute to Harvest financially, you can do so today online at www.harvestcc.me. Remember to love God, love people and love life.